I've been speaking Danish since I was a young child. Children now are not speaking Danish. If we don't work together, we will lose our language. Our Dene culture is dying, and so, yeah, we're just trying to regain what we lost. When I first started school, I think I was maybe six, maybe seven, and we went to the white school in town. It's, it's been demolished since then, but there were two nuns there, and they were actually very strict, maybe overly sometimes, right? And we were just young. We didn't speak English in the home. So when I started school, uh, I didn't speak English. So I had to learn it at school. And so now I work in various areas of Dene language preservation as a consultant for I'd say almost 20 years. It's pretty bleak in my opinion, unless we take it seriously. What's happening right now is there's an extreme language shift going on with the very youngest generation. For some reason, not all, most people in the community aren't speaking Dene to the little kids anymore. And you see that in school. When kids are playing in the school, they're all speaking English together. It's not just disappearing in the First Nations, the Dene First Nations around the Lash, it's disappearing throughout the country and throughout the world so unbelievably quickly that it's, it's absolutely scary. Kids need to learn English. The, the world around them is English, but they also need that identity piece, and that comes from knowing your own language. Learning two languages makes you smarter. It opens up pathways in your brain and the pride that comes with knowing your own language. I mean, you know there's so few other kids in the country that actually speak that language. I think that's a big deal. The Denny language is our language. You know, if, if you lose your language, you, you, you're losing your culture, basically. That's part of our jobs as politicians, as teachers, you know, to make sure, and as elders and as parents, to ensure that this language continues to grow. That is our culture, you know, preserving our language. It's just a way of survival. It comes along with hunting, trapping, fishing, living off the land, the basic life skills that, you know, like a lot of the Aboriginal people uh, possess. And I find that more and more of the younger generation are not doing that, which is really good. I do a lot of traveling, I, I meet a lot of different people and you know a lot of times the school will come up and say we are just so proud of how you guys bring in the Denny language into your system and making it you know, part of the curriculum. So yeah, I mean it's, it's awesome. This building that we're in, Clearwater River Denny School, is the only building in North America where students from three-year-olds right up to the bachelor's level with our education program are learning in an indigenous language. When you first started, we didn't have any resources. We all basically made our own materials. That's how we taught. And we, with a teamwork, we helped each other. We had to be proud of our languages that we were born with it. It's something that will be within us until the day we're gone. So I said, we can help you. We'll help you to understand it, to speak it. I said, we're not here to laugh at you. We're here to help you. If you want to learn, this is a place to do it. We had more and more ideas on how to immerse our students in land-based activities and cultural activities and how we can give them more of the Denny language. 
Since then we've built the cultural cabin. In the cabin we do work in there that involves Dene, all Dene in there. I can understand it, but I have trouble saying the words. I love the kids. I love working with the kids. They're, they make me happy. I'm glad I'm still can do it. I'll, I keep saying I'm retired. I'm still healthy. I'm still doing good, so maybe another year or so. I'll see what happens. <laughs> Once you learn the language, it'll be with you, no matter what. So hopefully one day they'll take my place and become a Dene teacher as well, like Abby's doing now, <laughs> which is good, yeah. Uh -huh. With my job, I'm given the opportunity to learn more about my language and find resources and be a strong advocate for the Dene language. I remember when I was younger, I was on a volleyball trip. I think I was in grade six or seven. It was like one of the earlier years. We were staying in Travel Lodge in Saskatoon and one of my peers and I, like we went into the elevator and there were two white guys in there with us and she spoke Dene to me and I shoved her and because I was ashamed, like I was embarrassed that we were speaking Dene, I shoved her and I, I shushed her. So like I'll never forget that and <laughs> because that's what like a lot of our kids go through that's what everybody goes through when you're when you're indigenous I guess I just want them to be proud of who they are and where they come from because if I could live off the land like my grandma and grandpa did I would any day I'd probably live till I'm 90 because they're healthy they're strong I admire that and I think everybody here should admire that too. The culture camp there is it's just exposure with the kids about about the outdoor culture that we have as, as Dene people, right? They're learning how to, to fish, to trap, to hunt. It's all about experience. I mean, if you know the basic life skills, that's awesome. You're carrying on your culture, right? So I'm fluent in Dene because of my grandparents, right? And uh, my mom was a big part of it also. And going to school, right? I mean, all the kids back back when I went to school, everybody spoke Dene, everybody. Once they get older, they'll realize that our culture could be dying, but it's nice to see these high school kids carry on that culture, I believe, and the language. This group came up, one boy came up and said, Grandma, I want to learn Dene. And I said, you just have to listen to me, I said, you know I mostly talk Dene, if you listen carefully. If you don't understand, I can tell you, I told him. So that's, that's how I do. Somebody has to show them, because I'm sure they're not going to pick it up themselves. So my dad, Jamie, and I, when I was a kid, he would take me out for hunting. He would actually teach me very important life skills, which would be like whenever I'm like stranded in the woods, would be like this: is how you start a fire, a, a quick way to start, like to start a fire, and for me to also speak my language. I'm very fortunate to like have it spoken around me when I was a kid. As I'm older now, I see that there's a huge change in like the Dene language being not used properly. Young ones, I see that aren't really speaking Dene when they should be. They understand it, but they can't speak it. I think it's really important to, for them to understand that they have an identity and who they are as Dene people, that it makes them somebody. It's really important we get the support from the community. For whatever reason, I think they still feel a little bit of shame for speaking their language. They don't feel it's important. They don't feel like beyond the school that it has any use. Haniso ce asun tana sao sao tana school ang tilon ila ay ahat he es ti tana yatia as ko honal tani tani yezon anezon sa ah he es ti pagan istad ay sa 
I really think that we need to change the minds of parents, of people in the community to support that it's a huge part of who they are and we don't want to lose that. I'm proud of my culture because it's been passed down from generations by generations. I like my culture and I want to keep it that way. <laughs> Let's preserve our language. Let's work together. Do your best no matter what. Keep moving forward. Whenever I'm in the city for a long period of time where I only get to speak English, and then coming home after that and speaking dinner with my family, it's just amazing because that, uh, that I know that there is a connection between all of us and that we've regained it. It's still there and I'm glad that I get to use it when I miss it or need it. I'm proud that I still have my grandpa, that I could sit down with him and actually listen to his stories and pass on that knowledge. I want to encourage people to pass it down if they can speak the language. If not, then to learn it because it's not too late. Thank you.